In this video, we'll be giving you the top 10 things that you missed in Loki episode 6, which were right in front of your eyes, but you did not notice. And Loki episode 6 was a feast for us, since it's the finale, and answering many questions and creating new mysteries, the finale hooked all of us. But before we start with the countdown, here's the spoiler alert, since we get into deeper details, so you should watch this video after you've seen the episode. So now, let's unravel the blast, starting at number 10, Two Universes. The finale opens with a shot of Marvel Cinematic Universe, like literally, the MCU. If you've ever wondered what the entire universe looked like, well, ta-da, this is how it looks. But as the picture zooms further out, we see that there are actually two universes at the start of the episode. Now it is entirely possible that the second universe was created off screen while the camera was zooming out. And maybe the realm of He Who Remains is located in other universe entirely. Or maybe it is Fox's Marvel Universe, home of Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Decide for yourself and let us know in the comment section. Number 9. Neil Armstrong, Malala Yousafzai and more. While we were sweeping over the shot of dual universes, we hear a master mix of bunch of MCU quotes from a whole lot of characters, including Falcon, Wasp, Captain Marvel, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and many other heroes. And also, there's been an underscoring that is, it's been a long, long time, which is the song that Steve and Peggy were seen dancing to at the end of Avengers Endgame. Way to go, Tic Tac! That's a bunch. Wakanda, no, you wouldn't have heard of me. Let me put you on hold. Dance off, bro. He's a friend from work. I can do this all day. In addition to all those sound bites, a bunch of real people can be heard as well. Alan Watts, Neil Armstrong, Malala Yousafzai, Nelson Mandela, etc. And if you haven't noticed this, then give us a thumbs up because we did. Number eight, Miss Minutes may have subtle influence. Yeah, Miss Minutes may have subtly influenced Loki. There was a brief moment in the finale where it looks like Miss Minutes was behind all of this, but it turns out that she was assisting a bigger threat. However, Miss Minutes still may have guided Loki to take one of the final decisions in the season. In episode 2, she really wants the God of Mischief to understand that existence of other timelines could destroy everything. And later on, Loki is given a choice to whether preserve the TVA or allow the possibility of other timelines, but he chooses not to open the door to multiple realities. While Miss Minutes might not have been deciding factor of the decision, her earlier lecture may have influenced the final choice. Anyways, thanks to Miss Minutes for helping in preserving the universe in multiple ways. Number 7. Loki is officially the reason why the Avengers got a time travel pass. Although Sylvie and countless others were captured by the TVA for messing with the flow of time, on behalf of the Time Variance Authority, I hereby arrest you. The Avengers were allowed for the time travel without consequences. When Loki initially called the heroes out, he got a vague answer for why the Avengers were allowed to go free. We're not here to talk about the Avengers. Oh no? No. What they did was supposed to happen. You escaping was not. But he who remains finally gave us a more concrete answer. He carefully manipulated events that both Loki variants went on a journey that ended them in his office. Every step you took to get here, Plementus the Void, I paved the road. But they wouldn't have made this far if the Avengers would not have dropped the Tesseract and gotten Loki on the TVA's radar. But he who remains did not have a great plan for Loki, the time highs would have been over before it started. So thanks for our beloved Loki. Hey, are you still watching? Well, if you are watching, then go ahead and smash that like button as it really encourages us to make similar mind-blowing content for you. Number 6. Loki and Sylvie's final fight mirrors their first one. It is really heartbreaking to see Loki and Sylvie fight each other after they have grown so close. In both the fights, Loki stops using the weapon and tries to convince Sylvie to stop attacking him. No wonder we love him. Their first conflict ended when Loki uses a temp pad to teleport both of them away from the TVA. But in the second fight, Sylvie transported Loki back to the TVA by herself. And doing that after their first kiss was a very cold-hearted move. And in both the clashes, neither of them truly wins. If they ever see each other again, we hope they'll finally break the fighting pattern once and for all. Number 5. Ravona's True Name While Judge Ravona was trying to uncover the mysteries of TVA, Hunter B-15 was exposing her boss's true identity. It seems like Ravona was a high school principal. If you see closely at the degree in the background, you can see that the woman's name is Rebecca Terminate. 
This was a great callback to the major Ravona comic storyline. After she betrays Kang in the future, she decides to go back in time to hang out with the earlier version of him. She changes her name to Rebecca Terminate to blend into a new setting. And only time will tell if Ravona in the show will keep her name or start going to Rebecca again. So you just have to sit tight and see what time unravels. Number 4. He who remains at the Citadel at the end of time. After enchanting the big purple Eliath at the end of last week's episode, we left Loki and Sylvie as they approached a mysterious building. Upon entering the building, Miss Minutes informs them that they are in the Citadel at the end of time. And after their chit chat with He Who Remains, we finally get to know that he is the one who's created the TVA. And my methods are deceptive, but the mission never was without the me, without the TVA. And not just in this timeline, he has created a similar TVA in other timelines as well. And in the comics, He Who Remains is a completely different character from who we met in the Loki season finale. For one thing, he's an old wrinkly dude with zero sex appeal. So do you think that Marvel did the right thing changing the character or not? And now we're heading straight to the top 3 spots. But before we get there, we just want you to go ahead and subscribe to Wonder X so that you don't miss the amazing videos that we will be uploading very soon. Number 3. He Who Remains is Gang the season finale finally confirms all the theories that have been floating around the internet. The MCU version of He Who Remains is the villain we will soon refer to as Kang, which isn't that big of a departure from the comics. In the comics, Kang, a conqueror of the timelines, learned a lot about the time conquering from observing the actions of He Who Remains wrinkly. The MCU just simplified all this by making He Who Remains and Kang one and the same. So who is Kang? He's a Marvel Comics villain comprised of dozens of identities from various timelines and dimensions. But most of those identities are warlords who love collecting worlds, like fans collect Marvel Legends action figures. In addition to being the villain in 2023 upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp, Kang has a lot of ties to a lot of other Marvel Comics characters. He is an Avengers villain and he also has a teen counterpart who is a founding member of Young Avengers. And brace yourself, Kang may or may not be an ancestor or descendant to Mr. Fantastic or an imposter posing as one or the other. And Kang is a lot of things to a lot of people, so it is very difficult to recognize what he is right now. Number 2. The Council of Cross Time Kangs He who remains Kang tells Loki and Sylvie about why he created the TVA to begin with. He explains that he comes from 31st century and that a variant of himself discovered the existence of multiverse of realities stacked upon each other. Around the same time, other variants in the other universes made the same discovery and they all figured out a way to communicate. They formed a council and shared a lot of information and compliments, until a few bad Kangs ruined the whole bunch. The more aggressive ones caused the multiversal war we heard about in the Loki's premiere, and he who remains Kang created the TVA to bring peace. And since this is the finale of the Loki series, we got you a little bonus. Now Kang's got the comic book look. The season finale ends with Loki being shoved through a portal by Sylvie. He lands in the TVA, but he soon realizes that this isn't the TVA he knew. Agent Mobius and Hunter B-15 have no idea who he is. And then Loki notices that the decor had changed. Instead of a bunch of statues of space lizards, there was a massive statue of He Who Remains dressed in Kang's classic comic book costume. He is noticeably missing his helmet, which is interesting because we noted a few weeks ago that the Timekeeper's helmet looked a lot like Kang's. It's also possible that Marvel won't want to cover the Major's moneymaker with a helmet and a blue face paint. That's usually how they handle things, considering how little our superheroes wear the helmets and the mask they wear in the comics. But come on, MCU has a lot of Kang variants, at least some of them have to wear that goofy helmet. What do you think? Number 1. Ravonna could return with a powerful Kang variant. Throughout the series, Ravonna tried her best to keep the timeline and the TVA intact. Although she lost control of the organization, she still believes that the time should be kept in check. But Ravonna likely won't take on this mission. In the comics, she eventually joins the forces with Kang Varian, who calls himself Immortus. He spent most of his time manipulating events and other versions of himself, all to serve his master plans. Although he who remains shared some similarities with Immortus, he notably went by a different name. 
If one of the Kang variants decides to clean up the timeline and call himself Immortus, Ravonna may become his fiercest ally. They could make a powerful duo villain in season 2. Isn't that going to be amazing? And now before you leave the video, make sure you smash that like button. And with that being said, we'll take your leave and we'll see you again at Wonder X with an amazing top 10.